Hi everyone and welcome to NameHero.com. In today's video tutorial, I want to talk about email delivery and also kind of the challenges that that brings with shared hosting and as ways to solve those challenges and to overcome them. So first, let's get started with, um, you know, kind of what email hosting is and shared hosting. So when you go to sign up with the web hosting package, and I'm going to click here at the top for our web hosting, all of these packages are on our shared high-speed cloud. Now, <clears throat> the shared aspect of it means that you're not the only single website on a given node. Now, since we are in the cloud, these nodes are extremely large and they're expanded in real time. We can add resources on demand. But the thing is, when you're sending email alongside other people, there's something called an IP address. And the IP address is what actually binds your domain to the node that it's on. So when it's a shared node, there's many different websites on that IP address. And so therefore, if one website, just one out of however many is on that node, um, starts sending out spam, the whole IP address is reputation is damaged. So let's say, for an example, let's say that you have a hosting package and someone, on, someone else on the IP address has a hosting package and they forget to update WordPress or they're using a weak password for WordPress. In that instance of WordPress is compromised, meaning that someone injected some malware and now they're sending out spam on the account. Well, your website is, has nothing to do with theirs, but it's penalized to the outward internet because in, the way spam filters work is they penalize the entire IP address because the thinking behind it is, well, if we get one bad email from this IP address, then there's probably others on there that's sending bad email too. So it gets put on an RBL or a, a block list, a blacklist um, that says, you know, don't accept mail from this sender because it could be spam. So this is, of course, a challenge since the early days of shared hosting. If you um, refer to our blog, I've got an article called The Problem with Email and Shared Hosting, where I go to this in even more details, you know, kind of, you know, what, what happened with the industry and where the spammers came from and um, the IPs and blacklisting and the benefits of a dedicated IP as well as third party email providers. So this this article explains a lot of it. And it's basically what I've just talked about, you know, that there's many people using the same IP address. It only takes one bad apple. And a lot of times it's not a spammer that's sending emails. It's someone that's compromised a legitimate account. And here at Name Hero, we've also seen things such as simple as this. Um, let's say you create multiple email accounts for your employees, staff, family members, or whatnot. And let's say they use a weak password for the email and someone cracks it, or they have a key logger on the computer and, and maybe their computer has a virus. Um, um, and then the attacker or spammer gets um, access to their email and starts sending out their um, their bad emails. And you know that's how these spammers operate because it's not like someone that's sending spam can come to Name Hero, buy a hosting package, and start sending spam because of course we'll detect that. And so they know that. So the only way for them to carry out their malicious doings is to compromise someone else's account because of course to Name Hero, you know you come along to sign up for hosting for your site. You've got a legitimate business. Of course we welcome that business. And you sign up, well, you know, everything's great until someone tries to get into that. And so that's why the first step to preventing spam is good security. You know, keep your, if you use WordPress, keep it updated. If you use other types of CMS, keep those updated as well. If you are, um, you know, setting up email accounts or, or, you know, passwords, make sure they're really strong. Use two-factor authentication. All those things can help prevent it. But how do you how do you fight when you have someone else that's doing it? You know, someone else. You've got good security measures. Your WordPress is updated, but someone else on the server has is carrying out this um, attack because they've compromised someone's account. Well, the first step in mitigating this is to get a dedicated IP address. So, on all of our basic hosting accounts, when you go to order, and I'll just walk through here really quick. Let's just I'm gonna use my exam example domain. Whoops. Zom.com. You're going to notice here we have an add-on called a dedicated IP address. And so this, you can select this option when you buy your hosting package. And this will mean that only your website is on the IP address. So you don't have to worry about sharing an IP address. It gives the appearance to the outward internet that you're, that you're on a dedicated server, that it's just your IP address. So one, if you decide to use your web hosting account for email and you wanna make sure you don't run into any of these issues, the easiest way is to order a dedicated IP address. 
Now, of course, you know, we monitor all these shared IPs every single day. And for the most part, they stay clean. But it only takes, you know, one compromised WordPress um, for us to have to go work on it. And by the time we start working on it, a lot of times it's already blacklisted because sometimes we don't even get notified until it's too late, even though we do many proactive measures. So while we do monitor these, the easiest way to even mitigate it is to order a dedicated IP address. The cost of this is $29.95 a year. So it's about $2.50 a month. And you know, if you're using email, especially if you have a business, it's well worth the $2.50 a month. So that's that's what I recommend. Now, if you are a reseller customer over here on reselling hosting packages, the corporate hero, it comes with a dedicated IP address, but it's for you and your customers to share. So if you want one just for your primary domain, you can order one at $29.95 a year. Um, the startup and entrepreneur do not come with one, but again, you can order those for $29.95 a year. And so that way it's, you know, you know, it's just you. Our corporate hero a lot of times doesn't run into these issues because it's just, you know, you and your customers. So if you run into an issue, you know, one of your customers might be compromised. And of course we can help with that. Um, but the startup and entrepreneur, we can add that on. For those on a VPS hosting package, you know, most of the time you don't run into this because it's your complete server, you know, so you, these, all these packages come with two dedicated IP addresses. And of course you can order more for $29.95 a year. Um, so we don't see this a lot on the VPSs because it's a virtual private server. You know, it's just your server, nothing shared on it. So that's, um, you know, that's one way to kind of prevent this from the get go from the beginning is to have a dedicated IP address. Now, even with that, sometimes customers and more frequently, we get tickets um, with customers having their emails going to spam. And the reason for this is a lot of times if it's not a bad IP, you know, if it's not something malicious going on, it's because they haven't correctly set up certain records on their IP address. So, um, you know, the RBLs, the blacklisting, that's one way that an email provider looks for incoming spam. You know, that's, you know, if you go check your email and you have a ton of spam, that's annoying, right? So email service providers, they use a couple level, levels of filter to try to eliminate that before it hits your inbox because it's annoying and you know it's, it's useless anyway so they try to block it so if you don't have proper email records set up then your message might also be flagged as spam because obviously a spammer isn't going to have um, the necessary records that set up so now in this video um, that you understand dedicated IP is, is most likely better than a shared IP, not most likely it is better, but um, you also need to have these records. So a dedicated IP, yes, and these records added, then you will find that the majority of your emails are all going into the inboxes and not getting flagged as spam. And this is actually a lot easier than it used to be to set up. So I do have another article in our knowledge base on how to increase your email deliverability. And you know I highlight here, don't be cheap, get a dedicated IP, address also ways to check your check your emails you know if you're sending out a newsletter make sure it doesn't look like spam so there's a tool out there called mail-tester.com and you can test your email to make sure it's you know not getting flagged to spam um, and then down here we've got um, the DKIM and SPF records so this is what we're going to talk about now making sure that these type of records are set up correctly um, so feel free to check this article out too because this is a good resource so this kind of explains it this is another good resource plus what we're talking about here today. So I want to walk you through, and I've got a list here, how to set up your RDNS, your DMARC, DKIM, DKIM, and SPF records. So it's again, it's super simple. So if you want to follow along, I'm going to log into my account, um, keydiets.com. So this is just an example uh, package of the Plus Cloud on our web hosting that, um, that we're going to be using today. All right, so if you want to take a second to get to this page if you're following along, um, and feel free to pause this video to do so. So once we're here, the first thing I need to do is one, do I have a dedicated IP address? Okay, if the answer is yes, then I need to set up my RDNS. So the RDNS record, it's a record that actually sits on the IP address, and so it binds that IP address to your domain. So when we assign the IP address to your domain, yes, it's assigned via the server, but then we need to update the RDNS record. So sometimes this is done automatically and you can always, um, you can check this using like MX Toolbox and certain tools out there. Um, but to get this assigned, you just simply submit a ticket. Unfortunately, this is done at the registrar type level for the IP address. Um, so it's gotta be done manually. So you just go to support, um, tickets, and open a ticket, technical support, 
and you go down here and you'd select your service. I've got a lot in here, key diets. Um, set our DNS record. And again, remember, this is just if you have a dedicated IP address. Hello, I have a dedicated IP and it's whatever it is. I'm just gonna enter an example. Okay, so this is an example of it. Now, by default, we do set all our DNS for the server's host name. So it's gonna be set by default. But if you say, no, 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 I'm just using this IP, this dedicated IP I bought just for my domain, key diets, then you can just request it here and we'll set it up. And that's the same for our VPS hosting customers. By default, it's set to the name of your VPS, so your host name. So, for example, um, oliver.uswebhost.com. You know, if that's your server name, if we go back to our package here, go back here, here, and I'll show you this. Plus, my server name here is Node203. So by default, if I get a dedicated IP, my RDNS is set to Node203. That will be acceptable in most all cases. But if your dedicated IP is just for your domain, you can actually have it modified just for that domain. And so that's why we would submit this ticket. Um, and the same for VPS, same for reseller hosting. It's always the, um, by default, it's the server name, but if you wanna have it bound, bound to your domain, this is how you do it here. Just a simple ticket. Our techs will have it done normally within 30 minutes minutes. Um, if it's got to be escalated to a supervisor, it might take maybe an hour, but it gets done really quick, rather quickly. So that's the first record. Now the other records we set up in cPanel, and they're also very simple to set up. So I'm in my plus cloud for um, keydiets.com. Now if you have a reseller or a VPS, you actually have to log into the cPanel of whatever account you want to set these records. So with our basic hosting, it's right here under actions, log into cPanel, and we also have a link right here, log into cPanel. So we'll go on in here, and right up here in the top search box, we can type in off, and you see email deliverability will come up. So it used to be called authentication. I still type in off to find it, um, but it's email deliverability is what it's called in cPanel now, just under email. So I'm gonna click this. All right, so now it's checking. All right, so now it says, problem exists, reverse DNS. Um, main domain is key diets, so now we click on manage. Okay, so this is a tool that cPanel released, um, and it's relatively new. Me personally, I just noticed this about a month and a half ago. So if you haven't you know, checked this out in cPanel in the recent last 60, 90 days, make sure you do go check this out, because um, they're always making improvements. So this shows that I'm missing a reverse DNS. Um, because it's not missing, okay, I'm sorry. It's using node 203 when sending emails from key diets. Okay, so again, if you're on a shared IP, we can't change this because it's a shared IP. So if, you're, if you get a dedicated IP, then of course we can change this to your domain. So you will see this warning if you have a shared IP, but if you get a dedicated one, we can actually bound it to the actual domain. And so that was how I showed you to submit this ticket, and that will get your RDNS, reverse DNS record set up correctly. Once we, once we set that, then this problem will go away. Now next, um, DKIM and SPF records. So these are also very important. So the DKIM is a record that sits in your DNS that just says the domain key for key diets is this. And so when you're sending email to someone else, the other email server can look up the DNS records for key diets and make sure it has these appropriate records. It's a way to verify that the server the mail's coming from is indeed the real owner because spammers will often spoof emails. And I'm sure you've seen this. I get them all the time. You know, if you've seen the emails that say, hey, um, Ryan, I'm sending this from your email address. I've compromised your account. And if you don't show it, send me this much Bitcoin, I'm gonna reveal this screen recording I made of you, which is ridiculous. And you know, I'm sure people send them Bitcoins because they keep sending them. So I'm guessing it works. But still, obviously that, that email did not come from me. Someone spoofed my email address. And most of the time, Gmail puts that in spam but sometimes it does leak through the inbox. Most of the time, not Gmail. But anyways, one way to prevent that spoofing is to have these records set up. 
So you're going to notice um, these are in, in fact valid. So in Name Hero, we have our servers automatically set these up as long as you're using our name servers. So if I go back to my client area here, you can see my name servers for key diets are NS are NS61 and 62.namehero.net. If I um, go to manage domain, I can verify those here. So if I'm using Name Heroes DNS and I've created the account new, not migrated, then these are set up for me. Now if I click Name Servers, you can see I'm in fact using the right name servers for my hosting package. Um, and it's been, of course, way further than 24 hours since I signed up, so everything's set up correctly. Now if I migrated from another web host, these might not be correct. So inside of um, cPanel email deliverability, I can actually set these up. So it's, since these are valid, I don't have to do anything. Um, if they were not, it would give me an opportunity or an option to add these records. And you know, there's nothing we need to do to them um, besides make sure they're added. So it's pretty fairly simple. Now for the SPF, you can actually customize it. So let's talk about that for a second. All right, so the SPF, again, and this is a text record for your DNS. So we have key diets, and here's my value. And now these, each one of these letters represent all kinds of different things. And so, but in, the, in layman's terms, it's saying um, mail sent from key diets should come from this IP address. So this is the IP address for key diets, and if it is, everything's good. Now you can customize this record. If we go down here, and we can add additional things. So under domain settings, additional host. So look, you can click this question mark. The server will approve all of the hosts that you define to send me email. The server automatically includes your primary email exchanger and these servers which you create MX record. So if you needed to add an additional host, and this is for those that have multiple IP addresses um, or sending mail from other servers. So maybe I have an application on Key Diets. Um, let's say maybe, I don't know, not WHMCS, but maybe a membership piece of software. And it's hosted remotely, but it sends emails out of Key Diets. Well, I would need to add that server IP address here um, so it, the emails look like they're coming from Key Diet, so it's approved, it's not spoofing. So I would add those in here. You can also Google this and you can get many of the examples that you need, and you can also go ask our team, we'd be more than happy to help you. This is just additional hosts that are authorized to send email from your domain. So and you, you, can put a, you can put a domain in here, or you could put an IP address or whatnot. Now, additional MX servers. This setting allows the server to approve all MX entries for each domain you specify to send email. So you can see here, it's just kind of a generic here. So if I was going to be you know, sending mail from Gmail, Yahoo, or anything like that, I could add uh, MX records for that specific domain. So um, if I need to you know, send email from other places that's not coming from my hosting account, I can also add them inside of here. Um, different, these are different IP addresses, so additional IP address blocks. Um, so again, if you have multiple IPs, so the, I guess these are domains, this is a domain, and these are the IPs. So additional hosts, if say, say my application was app.keydiets.com, this is where my application was. Let's say it was maybe, um, you know, maybe for WHMCS, and it's sending emails on behalf of Key Diets, you know, to customers. I could add that application inside of here. Uh, most of the time, you know, everything's fine with the default record, but if I'm noticing any issues, I could add them in here. Um, you know, MX, this if you have any additional MX entries. Um, and of course, most of the time, if you're running email on our servers here at Name Hero, this is not needed. Um, but if so, if you have additional MX records, then you would need to add that. And then of course, the IP addresses. So if you have another IP address on your account, um, we see this with VPSs a lot. You know, they have a dedicated IP address for their domain, but maybe they have a shared IP on their VPS they also want to, also want to authorize, you would just fill this out here. On down here, IPv6, we are not currently using this. We're currently still using IPv4, so you don't have to worry about this section at all right now. If we go on down here, there's other include items. Um, so if there's other domains you want to include, you can see here the SPF settings for all hosts you specify in this list will be included in your SPF settings. This is useful if you'll be sending email through another service, Mac, Comcast. So if you're, you know, if you're piping your email into uh, iCloud, uh, Comcast, Mac, or whatever, you can include these inside of here as well. Um, 
exclude all other hosts. So if you wanted to say, um, I'll read their example. Select a checkbox to include all other hosts if you've, if you've entered all the hosts you wish to send mail from your domain. So this will exclude everyone else but who you've given access to from sending mail from your domain. So this can be beneficial as well to check the all. And then of course it will preview the updated record. So basically all these settings are generating this for you here to uh, update a full record here. So me personally, most of the time, the default record's great. Now with Name Hero recently, I was editing our record um, because we have, of course, a lot of domains registered. Well, if you've ever worked with us here, you know the registry sends emails for domains on our behalf to verify emails. So the email is actually coming from the registry, but it's coming, it says it's from Name Hero. So we actually have to add records in here to make sure that when email is coming from the registry, the domain registry, it looks like Name Hero. So that's in a case where you would want to customize this stuff. You know, likewise, if you were, maybe you had your reseller and you have WHMCS installed at um, your domain.net and your main site, your, your main site.com. Um, you would want to add the .net in here so you could send emails from that application that look like they're from the .com. So again, most of the time, you don't need to add the additional settings, but the option is there, and then it generates the new record. Once you finish this, if you made modifications, you can then install the new record. And you can see I haven't made changes, so it's not asking me to do that here. Okay, so let's go back here to our records. All right, so here's our DKIM, here's the value, here's our SPF, um, and here's the value for that. So these are all here, and this is all great. Now, another question that we get, well, what about if I'm using Cloudflare? That's a great question. Now, with Cloudflare, you have two types of integration, a full integration and a partial integration. Now, you know, if you work with us here at Name Hero, Cloudflare is right inside of here. And let's just go to it, show you an example. So here's Cloudflare, and when you log in, and I can actually log into my account to show you. Sign in. Um, it asks you if you want to do a full or partial integration. Now, a partial integration means you continue to use the serve name servers of Name Hero, so you don't have to change it. Now you can see right now zone type full. This means that you're gonna use um, Cloudflare's name servers. If you wanna do this, if you wanna use Cloudflare's name servers, that's fine, you can do that. But you have to manually make sure you add all your DNS records, including your email records, including the ones we just talked about. Also, if you're using Cloudflare's name servers, some services such as Railgun is not available. Yes, sometimes it will work, but most of the time it's not available. Um, so keep that in mind. Now, if you are gonna do a full integration, which is what I'm gonna demonstrate now, how to add these records when you're using a third-party DNS, you can see that um, Cloudflare automatically picks up the records that are on Key Diet so far. So you can see this here. This is these records that I'm talking about, the default domain key. It's showing you right here to add it to Cloudflare. Likewise, if I just go to Cloudflare's main site, and I think I need to refresh here. So pending name server activation, here it is. It's not, it doesn't show me here. Okay, if we go to DNS, Yes. Okay, so Cloudflare automatically attempts to pull these in for you. Um, the problem we see is if these aren't set up or if they're set up incorrectly. So let's go back to cPanel here. Let's go back to our cPanel and we're going to double check these. So if you've migrated over from another web host, these could be incorrect. So let's go back to email deliverability. Email deliverability. Key diet. Oh, and I'm going right to the domain, manage, and let's check these. So first is our DKIM record. So default domain key, so we're gonna go back to Cloudflare. Uh, default domain key, and we make sure this matches what we have here. So we look over here, um, MIII, and it ends in QAB, and it does, it matches, so we're good. Now, if we didn't, if this record did not match or if it doesn't exist, we simply add it by clicking copy, Coming in here, select all, delete, paste, and now it's added, save. And now it's been added. So again, you look for this 
And if it's added, great, but then you make sure that it's valid. And again, if you make any changes now, you know, if you make any changes going forward to your domain, then you might need to come back and re-add it. So this will always show you, if, if I switch my domain's name servers to Cloudflare, this interface inside of cPanel would tell me if they're valid or not. So, you know, we are good. Um, SPF is another record here. So if I go over to here, um, my SPF record is right here. So you can see our text record, key diets, our SPF is here. And so we just, again, we just double check this. So we look here and dot two, two, and yes, it's correct. If we needed to add that, whoops, then we would simply just copy it and paste it in here, save. Now, if I can just show you too from, from the get-go, if these records aren't here, let me kill them. It looks like this, add record, um, it's going to be a text record. Go back here. The name for the top one for the DKIM. Copy this. Paste. Go down to here. Copy this. Paste. Save. Add record. Added. Same with the other one. We just copy it. It's a text record. Keydiets.com. Copy this. Paste it. Oh, paste it here. Save. Add record. And now they're added. So this is true not only for Cloudflare, but if you're using um, you know, Easy DNS, Power DNS, there's all kinds of third-party DNS servers. If your name servers are not on Name Hero, and if you're a reseller and you're using your own reseller servers, that means you're on Name Hero. But if it's a third-party service, you have to add these records. And you know, you might think at first, you know, when you're setting it up, that these are worthless records. They're actually very, very important records. So again, if you, especially for those that migrate from other hosts, cPanel tries to correct these, but some Sometimes it doesn't and sometimes still they're incorrect. So you want to make sure that these are valid. You want to make sure this always says valid inside of here. And if it doesn't, then you make the necessary corrections. But that's all there is to it. Now, of course, once you make changes like this, it may take an hour, two hours to propagate to update across the internet. But that's really as simple as it is to adding these, you know, just setting all these up. And again, if you do are on a shared IP, you will see this um, warning. Now, most of the time, this doesn't mean an exact failure, um, but it is a, a warning. Obviously, it doesn't match your domain. So again, the solution to that is getting a dedicated IP and having us to bind the IP just to your domain name. Let's go back to cPanel. So by setting those records up, that is the reason, or that is a, another step to making sure that your emails don't go to spam. So let's recap. First, you want to buy a dedicated IP address if you plan on sending email. If not, you're on a shared IP address, which means you're kind of at liberty of your neighbors, so to speak. You know, are they keeping a clean house? Um, you, know, you can't always guarantee that. We try here at Name Hero to make sure everyone does, but most of the time, more often than not, you know, once an issue happens, we are actually reacting versus proactive. Um, these issues don't happen as much as they near as much as they used to, especially with our security protocols. But sometimes they still do. So one, get a dedicated IP address for the highest level of email deliverability. Two, check your check your records. Go into cPanel email deliverability. Make sure your records are set up correctly. If you're using our DNS and you created your account with this they should be set up and active already. If you migrate it over, they might need to be modified, so check them. If you're using a third-party DNS provider, such as Cloudflare, EasyDNS, um, Amazon's DNS, make sure you log into those specific interfaces and add the corresponding records because they need to be set. Oh, and lastly, our RDNS record. Again, if you're on that shared IP, the RDNS is going to show the server name. So node203.namehero. If you're on a dedicated IP, hit up our support team, have them change that, um, that reverse DNS to reflect just your domain name. By doing all those steps, you will have a much better email success rate when sending out emails. Now, of course, the final thing is, is to make sure you're doing good email practices. You know, if you're, if you're mass mailing people um, and a system detects your email as spam, then you could get flagged. You know, even your dedicated IP could get flagged. So, you know, in this email, or in this email, in this blog post here, I show a tool called Mail Tester. You know, make sure to test your emails here.
So you can actually, if you're gonna be sending like a newsletter or something, send it to this test email address. And again, this populates every time you refresh this page, so don't send to this one. Um, but then once you send it, you can check your spam score. If, it, if your email looks like spam, then really all the records and, and stuff is useless because the email looks like spam. So make sure you're practicing good email practices um, when sending emails. Of course, in the United States here, we have canned spam, the canned spam compliance law. Um, if you're sending emails that are not canned spam um, compliant, it's actually against the law. Not only against Name Heroes laws, it's against the United States laws. So you can get in legal trouble, big trouble for that. Of course, um, that's violation of Name Heroes policies and we have to terminate your account. So again, when you're sending emails, you make sure you are canned spam compliant. If you're sending out uh, newsletters and stuff, you know, not only do they need to be in compliance, but test them to make sure they don't look spammy. Test the spamminess of your emails. So by doing all this stuff, then you will see a much higher deliverability rate. Um, your emails will not go to spam, they will reach the inbox. Um, one final thing, you know, keep good practices on your site, good security practices. This goes all back to keeping WordPress updated. When you create an email account, let's go to cPanel, let me show you. When you create an email account for someone, so let's go to emails, email accounts, um, create a new account. If I'm creating a new account, and let's say I want to create one for my brother, let's put brother, brother at Key Diets. When I generate a password, generate, this is has a strength of 100, which meets the system requirements. Make sure the password strength's 100. See, you wouldn't want to put, say if I create an email for my brother, and this is what a lot of people do, so don't laugh, brother123. That's what a lot of people try to do. And of course, the system's not even gonna take that. Um, maybe if I put four, it does. So, you know, this is a bad password. You wanna use this. Your password should look like that. It should look something random. And really, you know, me personally, I go even further. You know, I'll go to sometimes 20 characters. Let's see if they'll accept that. Generate, yeah, something like this. And you say, oh, Ryan, that's awful hard to remember. You're right, it should be hard to remember. You should not remember your passwords. Use a password manager, LastPass, um, 1Password. There, there's all kinds of applications out there that you can use. You can even have like LastPass has a phone app. So you can store this in LastPass on your computer and then also grab it on your phone. Um, your email password should not be something that you remember. You know, that's the whole purpose of it. You should not be able to remember it because someone else could guess that. There's dictionary-based attacks out there that try all day long to get into email accounts. And even if you say, well, I'm just an everyday Joe here at my brother at Key Diets, it doesn't matter. They don't discriminate anyone. There's bots out there attacking everything or trying to get into everything. So by keeping a good password, that's uh, probably the biggest layer of defense. Um, you know, if all these records and stuff I've showed you how to set up, it's all worthless if you're using a weak password. You know, far too often we'll see this too is, you know, someone used a weak password, so an attacker guessed it, and they're just sending out emails left and right from their domain. And especially if the records that we just showed are set up correctly, it gives them an advantage until things start getting blocked. So, you know, they have about a couple hour window, a couple thousand email window to get through some of their scams and spam out there. So, um, you know, make sure that using good password etiquette, um, you know, that goes a long way too. And also, you know, if your website uses WordPress, Drupal, Joomla, um, an application like that, make sure it stays updated because out-of-date WordPress are vulnerable. Uh, make sure you're using a good admin password. Make sure you have a good security plugin, WordFence Security, Ninja Firewall, um, whatnot. You know, all these layers of defense and security, that's, um, you know, key to protecting your account, which also is key to protecting your emails to make sure they're going to the right place um, because that's where all these problems stem from is, uh, is um, compromised accounts, mostly through weak passwords or updated applications. So, you know, if the, everything's secure, then that's great. And these records and all this, then you'll be just fine. But all these records we've added and talked about today, if you're not keeping good security, then you're, whole, you're vulnerable and then it just takes one intrusion to kill an IP address reputation. And once your IP's um, reputation's damaged, it takes about a week, one week, to get everything back to normal. So, you know, you have these email delays and gosh, we get, you know, people get mad at us when it happens, but um, you know, if all this proper etiquette and, and housekeeping is not done, then that's kind of, you know, the inevitable eventually that will happen. So uh, let us know if you have any questions on this. I'm really pleased with the changes here in cPanel they've added because back here when I typed um, this post here, Where'd it go? Oh, it's this one here on how to increase your email deliverability. You just have to add these records in here manually. Where'd they go? 
DKAIM. Yeah, so you actually had to go in here and add these. Now they've made this interface a lot cleaner in here in email deliverability. So, you know, oops, I went to email history. Email deliverability. So they've made this a lot cleaner here, this area here, to show you when there's an issue and whatnot. Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm really pleased with cPanel. It's done that. It's made all of our jobs a lot easier. But we still do get some questions, especially when it comes to the third-party DNS. So um, you know how I did that in Cloudflare is how you would do it at Amazon or wherever else if you have um, different um, a different DNS provider than Name Hero. So again, let us know if you have any questions. You know we really want to see you get your emails through. Um, you know this is probably one of the most frustrating support tickets to deal with because most of the time you know when problems come up, then it's like you know what what, what why are these issues coming about? So I'm hoping through this video I can shed some light on all of this and you know try to make this whole um, solution um, out in the light and simpler for everyone. So thanks for watching and using us here at namehero.com.